What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fire with my man, Eric Sheets Haber. We're going to be talking about today, Wednesday's NBA slate. I just going to touch on a couple of things. Got a lot of uh, stuff going on, so I'm going to try and get the best things I can out. Uh, I'll get my core plays up. I'll get I'll get uh, I'll do these videos. I'm going to try to make it for live later today, but I can't promise uh, maybe traveling tomorrow. And uh, it's just it's just a kind of a hectic week for me and just wanted to give it, you know, you guys, most of you guys who follow us pretty regularly know that. But we're going to do the best we can. And uh, this is our first look for Wednesday. So Sheets, how have you been doing? And uh, yeah, what uh, what's what's going on over there for, for you? Yeah, we didn't have a chance to talk uh, yesterday. I actually had a probably had a, finally had a decent lineup in, in the in the 555 the other day. I ended up in like I didn't quite get top 10, but pretty close. So oh yeah, that, that was, was a nice one. I saw that. Yeah, so that was good. And then uh, yesterday, uh, I got I got Norman Powell of like like most people. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I would so have as well. Did, so that didn't work out. Um, but I'm ready to tackle this uh, this big slate tonight. And I'll, I don't listen. I'm I'm around, so I'll be able to pick up. Uh, I want to say the slack. I don't want to put it that way, but I'm, I'll be picking up the pace and uh, and uh, got everything going on. We're doing this, I appreciate this, the Survivor Pool video. We're doing MMA. We're doing every basketball slate, every hockey. And I've been doing daily hockey videos too when I've had time. I think that's that's not going to. I think th that being a three game slate tonight and just everything else going on, I'm not going to have time for that. But I'm I'm doing as much as I can. So hopefully people are getting something out of it and. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens. No, I, yeah, I appreciate everything, man. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to get into this slate. It's, it's one I wish I could play because I kind of kind of like this slate. You got, you got a nice big slate. We don't need to worry so much. Part of what I was worried about yesterday uh, with with when I was trying to cover the live of the small slate is there were so many injuries and still question marks about the later games and so many things going on that it's it was it actually it just you knew ownership would drive heavily towards certain forces and and actually one of the ones I would have felt better with was Norman Powell so that was kind of a weird you know he was and he was the one that busted I was the one he was the one I said I felt like I, I felt the most comfortable with so yeah it's just very weird it's also very weird whenever the Clippers chalk without the without the Kawhi and, and Paul George thing anyway but uh on to tonight uh we could pull up your screen and go game by game here and uh go through it because I think that it's a it's a much easier slate I think to uh to, to to you know you don't need to try and find ways to get I think as off the board uh, even though it's it's not like the thirteen gamer Wednesday slate it's that what do we have nine games tonight um, it's 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 just a nice a nice solid slate where I think we can actually make like optimal plays and not have to worry as much about ownership which hasn't been the case recently yeah I see the the ownership projections at least the earlier ones are pretty 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 tame you know mm -hmm. pretty kind of spread out so basically it becomes a as they say in my business a stock picker's market you know. I, uh, pick the best lineups and you, you'll probably do well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's so funny. It sounds easy, right? Just pick the best lineups. <laughs> right. me of, uh, there was an old, uh, old Steve Martin bit like a long time ago. It was like uh, the concept was how, how to make a million dollars and not pay taxes. <laughs> okay. First you get a million dollars. Okay. So then, <laughs> so, 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 so yeah, must, must be great. You know, just, you just make the, make the best lineup and there uh, should be no problem. So with that said, um, I have Orlando Philadelphia net up first. Okay. And and for me, making the best lineup or, Orlando really Cleveland. Matter. Orlando Cleveland, correct? Right. Yeah. Sorry. Uh for me, making the best lineup really doesn't have much to do with this game. Um, yeah. I don't I honestly don't have a single player for either team in my even in my top 20 as far as values. You're like you have a very fishy Franz Wagner is like the best thing I can mm -hmm. even come up with. From here, um, you, Donovan Mitchell, I guess, if you want to spend up for there at ninety five hundred, would be, I think, something you, I guess, you could do, whatever. But for me, this game is almost a cross off, actually. Yeah, I I, I tend to agree with you. Um, I I do think you'll see Mobley start putting up actual numbers at some point. I know the numbers haven't been there, um, but I don't know if this is. I don't. I, I sort of. Sort of maybe it's a, a good night to wait and see on that one because I, I don't think that we need to, to do anything with that one uh, just yet. Uh, I, I think that he actually is a reasonable play on on FanDuel just because the, the block steal upside I think is decent for this matchup. And everybody else just fine. Uh, Wagner, fine. Uh, Paolo, fine. But I don't think this is the right slate for, for these guys in terms of playing for ceiling. These are two slower teams. And uh, for what it's worth, I think there's also a little bit of blowout risk for in Cleveland's favor. Although it's very hard to figure that out early in the season because all the bad teams are good and all the good teams are bad. So <laughs> it's really hard to figure out what's happening in the NBA these days. But uh, but yeah, this is this is pretty much a uh, very little interest to me. Uh, next, you have Atlanta, Detroit, correct? Yes. All right. That one, I actually do think we wanted to get some stuff done here. This is a high total. You have a 228 total. 
Um, I, I just want to say, like, I, I think that Trey Young, I, I'm starting to just think in real real basketball terms because I've actually been able to watch some games here with my kid and while I've, while I've been in Idaho. And I just, I, when I watch Atlanta play in general, I, I start to wonder is, DeJounte Murray might actually be a better player than Trey Young in real life. I actually think he, I think that's a reasonable argument anyway. Um, Trey Young also has shot the ball terribly this season, but he's never actually been that great of a shooter. And he sort of gets credit for being this awesome shooter who's just really not, not a great shooter. He just shoots a ton of volume. He's got long, he's got, you know, incredible range. All this to say, I don't think I want the Atlanta side of it. Um, however, on the Detroit side of it, I think that you have a, a pace up matchup for them. I think that you've got, you know, but like, I don't like playing Bogdanovich on big slates, but con- consistently producing uh, does a lot of things. You know, he can rebound and, and, and well, rebounding and scoring is really basically it. But against this kind of Atlanta team, I think that uh, I think this is a, a spot where I would consider him. I also think this is a, a pace up matchup for Cade and Sadiq Bay is down to 5,900. They dropped his price for some reason. And I, I'm sorry, not Sadiq Bay. I, I don't know why I said Sadiq Bay. Oh, they, yeah, I did say Sadiq Bay, but I, I meant to say. The guy who won't show up for anybody is Jaden Ivey. I, I think it's probably too far fetched for this slate, but I do like Cunningham and Bogdanovich a little bit. Those are the only guys I would consider in my pool. I think as of right now, um, Isaiah Stewart. Everybody else feels just like a little bit, a little bit fishy to me. That's that's where I'm at here. How about you? Um, first of all, I, I I I can't imagine a world where Trey Young is a better basketball player than than DeJounte Murray. I don't, right. I don't even think it's close. If you want, oh, to I love to hear that. Yeah. Um, but um, that said, I, I will, I will make, I, I will make the statement that Trey Young on FanDuel is way too cheap. Yep. Um, uh, he's going to be probably pretty popular as a result, but he's only 8,700 on FanDuel. So that's, uh, I don't want to say broken, but that, that's a real, I'd just say that's a really good price. Um, yep. and, and the thing, and I, I agree with Kate, with Kate Cunningham in, in a, in a, Except here's here's my my thing. Um, it, it is, I guess, technically a pace up matchup, but but if if we're gonna rely on Cade Cunningham to blow up with maybe Dejounte Murray guarding him, that that's 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 asking a little bit, I guess. Mm-hmm. But what I will say about the Cade Cunningham play is, and we I remember this last year. You know, he really hasn't shot it well at all in the first three or four games, and yet still. He's been able to put up reasonable fantasy fantasy scores, and it's kind of like the opposite of what we talked about the other day when we had like Lillard, who was able to put up like make every shot and yet still just barely get there. You yeah. have on the other hand, you have like he's like Kate Cunningham, which seems like he's playing awful, and yet he's still having 38, 39 fantasy points. I mean, the guy's like so active everywhere, you know, with all the rebounds and and the, and the assists and the steals and all that stuff. That all you need is a game where he shoots, you know, reasonably. And, and and he can really go go bananas. So I think him at seventy nine hundred. I agree with that. I think it's a very very strong. Yeah, and 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 I, I would just encourage people to sort of throw away a little bit of the the fantasy points per game that he's that he's averaging compared to his price. But I, I do want to say the only the only worry I concern I have is that I think Jaden Ivey is really really good, and and they they do let him just sort of run the offense sometimes. So it's not like it's all Cade centric like it was last year as much. That's the only the only hesitation I have, even though I, I do think it's a, a, a good play. I would probably treat it like if he's going to be 15 percent or higher owned, I probably will avoid it. And if, if, if he's going to be less than 15 percent owned, I would probably go after it heavily. Um, that's that's sort of where I'm at with Kate in this one. Um, all right. Philly, Toronto. <laughs> uh, boy, uh, you know, like it's it's a weird thing in Philly uh, that they, they can't seem to figure out what they're doing in real life right now. But I still think that James Harden at 9,600 is completely in play. Uh, all, he's averaging 57 fantasy points per game, and he's 9,700. If this was a situation where, like, like it was in the past, where I mean, we, we would just be locking him in. The guy, the guy went four of 18 a couple games back. He still put up 48. He's put up 56 in every other game so far this season. Even in a tough matchup, I think 9,600 is actually reasonable. It's not. A, it's certainly not a good matchup against Toronto. But I, I kind of like James Harden here. And I don't mind any time you want to play Embiid. I'm always I'm always fine with it. I don't think this is the ideal spot, but I'm fine with it. And then everything else is is hinging on whether Scotty Barnes plays. Uh, although the the most interesting guy to me, whether Barnes plays or not, would probably again be Siakam. And that's that's pretty much all I have from this game. How about you? Yeah. So as I mentioned going into the last game, I mean Hard, Harden is is Harden's. I think the the narrative is real. I think he's in shape. I think he's 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 just he's much better this year. He was able to put 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 out like two 40, 40 minute 
uh, games back to you know in back to back games, and they they took him out at the end. They didn't need him in the last you know whatever. You don't mm -hmm. only played thirty five minutes, whatever. And listen, even his last two two outings, he was one rebound away from even more fantasy points for the triple double. And I, I think that that he. He just could be some, he could be like the old 11 K Harden at 9,600 right now. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't particularly like this, like this matchup. Um, uh, but Hey, <laughs> it's, it's still James Harden. He can, he's been putting up fantasy points, you know? So he put 60 up there. I mean, listen, you're going to need somebody to put up 60. I mean, you got Giannis on the slate, right. And you got Jokic and you got, well, you got Embiid too, you know, uh, uh, you, you need to get someone up there to put 60 and, and Harden certainly can do it. Um, uh, Embiid, um, one thing I will say about Embiid in this spot is he looks to be really low owned. Um, and whenever you get Embiid at really low owned, it, it's probably a decent idea to play him. Uh, but you're also going to get Jokic at low owned too, you know, so it, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of interesting to see because you're going to have, you're going to have Giannis. We'll get to him later. That's like such a, such a great play that it's hard to play the play either Jokic or Embiid with Giannis. So. That's why those guys are going to be low on, but we'll get there. Um, I don't really have much interest in anybody else on Philly. Um, I'm still uh, anti Tyrese Maxey until further notice. And on the Toronto side, if if it wasn't a center eligible, I would say that that Siakam is sort of in play, but I don't know if I can do it. So mm -hmm. so for me, I'm kind of I'm kind of at Harden or nothing. Maybe Embiid. I, I think in the end, I'll probably won't play either of them. <laughs> I'll probably end up doing what most people do is play Giannis and then go mid range as the other guys, whatever. But, um, but I guess Harden's a good, good pivot. I guess Embiid's a good pivot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just interesting to see Harden, you know, in the single digit ownership at 9,600 when he's just consistently dominating the ball and crushing this price, even though it's not great for the team as a team, it's, it certainly has worked out well for fantasy so far. So, I, I, if I was playing, I would have 25% Harden if I was, if I was playing tonight on, on heavy volume, I, I really think that that's a, I, I just think it's, you know, we are seeing versions of the same Harden and, and he's very much not shooting reliant, as I was saying, like he's, he's, he rebounds, he gets tons of assists. He has a ball in his hands a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of into the Harden idea, actually, the more I think about it, especially as you said, because the, the ownership is going to flock elsewhere. So I, I can definitely get behind Harden at low ownership. You can see that in FanDuel, who is always reactive to, to the player's recent performance. He's 10, eight over there and he's 9,600 on DK. And I still don't expect him to get much ownership. So then we have Charlotte at your Knicks. Um, this, this one is, why don't you start us off with this one? Cause I'm, I'm having a little trouble deciding what I want to do. I feel like every night, everybody from Charlotte looks like a good play. And this is uh this is another one of those nights where I sort of feel the same way, but I don't love the matchup. And do we want to play a chalky Dennis Smith jr? We like him when he's not chalky. It's kind of weird to see him, you know, he's going to be in the starting lineup with no Rozier. Somebody's got to do something with no Rozier in there, right? And also the Knicks might absolutely beat the hell out of this team tonight. So what, what do you think of this one? Yeah, not to, not to, not to put another more fuel on the fire, but, but, but Dennis Smith Jr. was, was not pleased with the way that the Knicks didn't want to play him. Okay. Um, oh, this is a good point, hard. by the way. So, so, so he's coming back to Madison Square Garden and, uh, in a situation where, where he don't, he doesn't give an f about you know what I mean about 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 the game pretty much he's uh they, they start him and they they can and they play him I mean he's gonna he's gonna shoot as much as he as humanly possible you know so and he can put up fantasy points when when he's uh when he gets it going so yep uh I would I would probably lean towards playing him uh, if, if it turns out I just have to believe that with so many options on the slate that no one's going to be that chalky. That's, that's the only thing. Like if he does become like some big 20% owned guy, I mean, you just, I just don't think you can do it, but, but, but if he's just some other dude, um, I, I, I'll take a shot at that. So um, I like him. I'm, I don't really like the, I mean, he, what's his name? Like Gordon Hayward looks to be just kind of a play every, every, every slate. Um I see him also getting 19% ownership, at least to start off with. I, I, again, a hundred, hundred players to choose from this slate. Um, I don't, I don't think I want to do that either. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it'll probably be Dennis Smith Jr. I'll probably end up, end up being a sucker and playing it. Um, I don't have much to run back on the Knicks side. So I will just say, I will just take a, take a shot on Dennis Smith Jr. 
Yeah, so so I feel like Dennis Smith Jr. is sort of like one of those one of those things. If we think he's going to be ten percent before lock, yeah, I think I would play twenty five percent of him. If we yeah. think he's going to be twenty percent owned, I think I play like five percent or, yeah, or right, I exactly. him out. You know what I mean? Or zero or zero, yeah, right. <laughs> something like that. Um, the guy who who stands out to me as a tremendous tournament play is Julius Randle here. Um, first of all, they played. It's a very small sample size. They played three games, and the two games that weren't massive blowouts, Julius Randle put up fifty fantasy points in each of them or 49 and a half and 56. Uh, this is a front line that can't guard anybody. And I have no problem playing Julius Randle and looking for a, a potential, like not, I don't want to say triple double, but a, a game with five assists and, you know, I don't know, 20, 20 some odd points and 15 rebounds seems very, very much in the cards for me for, for Julius Randle. So I, I like Randle at 8,200. I feel like that's a really low price for him. And I, uh, I, I thought Randall would have a little bit of a bounce back year and, so far, he's been pretty good. He's 7,900 on FanDuel, and he's only – I mean, I feel like he gets 50 here as much as he gets 40. So I, I'm unless it's a blowout, I think that you're going to see a big game from, from Randall. I really like Randall. He would be a guy I would probably uh, – I mean, you're looking at 5% on FanDuel at, at, at currently projected, and you're looking at 1% on DraftKings, and he's 8,200 – 79 and 8,200 for a guy who I expect to be around 50 as much as 40. I feel like that's a really good spot to take advantage of. So I, I like the idea of trying to get to Randall. Um, I got, I got, I got something for you. So, so if you want, if you want to win a hundred thousand tonight or whatever it is, yeah. Um, and if Dennis Smith Jr. is is in fact chalky, how, how about how about your man Bobby? How about Book Knight? Um, I, I thought about that when I almost mentioned it. Go ahead. How about Book Knight at thirty four hundred? Let's 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 say let's say that Dennis Smith Jr. is kind of crappy or whatever it is. The game blows out, whatever it is. I don't know whether you know they did sign Theo Maladon to like a two way contract, so I don't know if he kind of gets in there to show what he can do. Um, I'm talking about the anti Dennis Smith play, but you talked about Book Knight a couple of a couple of games ago as as possibly being you know an active type player, whatever it is. And this this I don't know for for to to win the slate at 3400 on on a slate without a lot uh, of value. I mean, or if, if people overplay Josh Richardson in a million percent ownership for 3900, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. so I think that um I don't know this this could this could be the win hundred thousand dollar play. I like that. I actually really like that call. I almost mentioned it, and I think that 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 that's the uh, that's the lottery type of play right there. That I think you're right yeah. could 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 actually end up getting there. Most of the time, you're looking probably at twelve to fifteen fantasy points, but but there's there, there is a thirty path in there for sure. So I, I kind of like that call, and uh, just want to reemphasize my my love for Randall if this game stays close. Uh, only hoping he doesn't get in foul trouble or something because I I don't see how they can cover him in Charlotte with their front line, and they seem to be running a lot of the offense through him early in the season. All right. Uh, next, what do we have? We have uh, Milwaukee, right? We have the the big one, the Brooklyn Milwaukee. Um, yeah. Well, for this one, for me personally, I, I like the. Uh, I, 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 I look. I think Ben Simmons looks awful in real life. I don't think this is the spot where I really want to play him. Um, I actually think you have an argument for Durant here as a as a potential. If, if somehow value opens up later, and maybe you can play Durant and Giannis together, but. Uh, it's a weird, it's a huge total game uh, with this team. These teams obviously have history with the stepping on the line and everything from a couple of years ago. I, I wouldn't mind the idea of, of getting to some, uh, both of Durant and, or, and Kyrie. We know one, what Milwaukee's biggest weaknesses in general, it's not, it's not even a weakness. It's, it's the, it's the way they fundamentally play defense is they try to clog the middle and they will let you shoot threes. They, they, they give up the most, you know, one of the teams in leading uh, over the past two seasons and, and three pointers allowed and three point attempts allowed. I think they're the number one in terms of three pointers attempts allowed. Um, so I kind of like both of uh, both of those guys as, as maybe low owned uh, spend ups. And of course, very hard not to like Giannis every time he's on the court, uh, especially with bodies missing like Chris Middleton. So I am, I'm very good with Giannis and one of Kyrie, Kevin Durant. Uh, I also think Javon Carter at 3,300 is sort of the obvious chalk, but not the most exciting chalk on a big slate, but he is a guy who I expect to be five to six X and then there's upside on that. So those are, those are my main plays in this game. How about you? Yeah. So first of all, I, I do feel somewhat validated, even though we didn't like smash or anything like that, thing like that, that Nicholas class and did in fact play 33 minutes. Um, that that's that's all I wanted. You know what I mean? It's exactly. Just, uh, you want to have a chance. Yeah. So he did play thirty three. I do seven for ten from the field. Seven rebounds. I don't know exactly what you want from him. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. So so uh, uh, not not that I want to play him today, but I just figured I'd bring that up. Um, and, and I'm kind of glad that you said that about the uh, about the guys from Brooklyn because 
you know, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of press going around how, how bad Brooklyn is now. Um, and listen, these guys, Durant and, and Kyrie, they 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 have championships. You know what I mean? They get they got a lot of pride. And I, I think I think they're going to play well. Um, is it enough to win in Milwaukee? I guess probably not. But you know what? Milwaukee doesn't have Middleton. This is this is a, this is a shot. You know what I mean? Uh, mm-hmm. To to play well. And I think that you know, uh, I think that I think you're on to something. I think I think the, you can get away with it and play either Durant or Kyrie with 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 Giannis, or even by themselves without Giannis. I think that um, uh, I think though that no one's going to play either of them, mm-hmm. and and. They obviously both have incredible, incredible ceilings. Uh, of course, I, I would prefer if like Drew Holiday wouldn't wouldn't guard Kyrie too much, you know. But whatever. Or Durant, uh, he guards him too. Yeah. <laughs> let him, you know, let him guard Durant then. And I'll tell you, yeah. Whatever. Then, then I'll play Kyrie. But uh, uh, I kind of like that call of, of taking one of the Milwaukee, one of the one of the Brooklyn guys, uh, either Durant or or Kyrie. For whatever reason, I it's so stupid to say like I don't I don't play Durant as much as maybe I, I should. Um, no, I think you're actually you're accurate not to. I think that that's the way that you know the way he plays. I mean, he hasn't he hasn't hit fifty yet this season, but this might be the right spot for him. Uh, um, but I, I I think I prefer Kyrie for some reason. Um, no reason really, but just that that's this is kind of my gut, and mm-hmm. I think that's a good way to get low owned in this on, on a slate like this. Yeah, I agree. And the one last guy I'm going to throw in is. Look, there is nothing wrong with Brooke Lopez in the vacuum here. The only thing I worry about, also, you have his former team and all that nonsense, but. He's, I mean, he's put up, he's getting 30 a game uh, so far in the very, very early two game sample size. Uh, I, I would be surprised if one of Brooke Lopez or Bobby Portis doesn't score 30 fantasy points tonight. I don't think that's enough to really like want to desperately force them in, but there's upside on that a little bit. Um, not the most fun play to, on a big slate, but I, I do think Brooke Lopez as sort of a middle play, just that center position in general, I, I tend to, to, to overlook him. But, you know, look, 30, 30 to 35 fantasy points is not the worst thing in the world for 5,300. So I could certainly get behind a, a Brooke Lopez play if you wanted to get a little bit funny with it. No one ever plays him. And, uh, and you know, they're, they're really going back to their, to their roots without Middleton. And they're, they're just they're, they're, letting, they're letting him play. And, and I, like I said, I expect he or Portis to have a pretty nice night here. All right. Um, and moving on, you, we next have Indiana, Chicago. Um, real quickly, I just – I have a – an Indiana take here. Uh, again, you want to hope this game stays close. I don't know how realistic that is. I don't know what's going to happen with Miles Turner tonight. Um, that's still up in the air. But I am, to be honest with you, enough so to where even if Miles Turner plays, they like Jalen Smith. Okay. Jalen Smith got hurt in the one game, which threw off his numbers. The three games Jalen Smith has played, and he hasn't even played that many minutes in them. It's 22, 28, and 25 minutes. He's put up 30, 46, and 37. He's 5,700. He's forward eligible, um, especially if Turner's out. But even if Turner's in, I do like Jalen Smith. I, I believe in I believe in the guy. I, I think he's actually pretty talented. I know they like him. And this guy was a, a high a high end pick a couple years ago. In fact, I think that they picked him over Halliburton with the pick before Halliburton. I, mean, I got to double check that, but um, in in Phoenix, and yeah, I'm pretty sure they did actually. Uh, so he's he's my he's my favorite. I I love this Matherin kid. I don't know if I can get there at 6,200. I'm just going to double check Matherin's price on FanDuel, uh, 5,700, a little bit better, but, uh, the probably, probably not, probably not quite enough to be in play for me. And then if this game stays close, I expect Halliburton to have a big game again. Um, but it, you know, you're asking a lot for a team that, that I, that I really don't trust, but I, I do like him, uh, you know, just in a vacuum. I like those two plays, the Halliburton and, and Smith. And if Miles Turner does play, by the way, I like Miles Turner a little bit. I just don't know if I want to, I want to. I don't know what to do with that. We probably won't know until later. Um, and on the Bulls side, uh, uh, Zach Levine is going to be uh, lower owned tonight. And I will always take shots against a bad defense that doesn't guard the three well with Zach Levine. And I don't mind if you want to play Vooch if there's no Miles Turner. That's my overall thoughts here. Yeah, Vooch had 23 rebounds in his last game. Um, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty sick. Pretty nice. Um, uh, I, I agree with what you said about Jalen Smith. Uh, I like Jalen Smith myself. I mean, he, he uh, just as a player, um, I, I wish he wouldn't have, wouldn't shoot all these threes. Um, I, yeah, they, they have all the, every, every stretch for, or whatever they, they want to shoot threes. They want to get him to do it. But, but I, I tell you, I had him a couple of, you know, in that first game against Washington where he had 30 mm-hmm. and just every time he shot a three, I'm like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> get him, get around the rim, you know, get your rebounds, get your blocks, get whatever. And that's what he did in his last two games. Um, 
But even still, he was shooting five threes. I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. But in any case, I do like him. I don't. I don't know about fifty seven hundred. Um, uh, he's just not doesn't quite get there for me. But in general, yeah. And then if if Turner is out uh, again, um, Terry Taylor, Jackson, these guys. I mean, someone's got to start at center against Vooch, right? I mean, yep. like uh, they have to have people in there. Yep. Um, but they're not showing up for me all that much. And 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 interestingly, like Tyrese Halliburton again, like uh, another guy who. Yeah, I mean, I watch him play, and he seems pretty active, and he you know looks like a play. I mean, he's ten percent or under maybe. Um, mm-hmm. not the greatest pace game, I suppose, but, uh, yeah. Um, All he does, I mean, look for 41 and a half is his low game of the season. Yeah. He has 50. the ball whenever, he, whenever he's in the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and the Chicago side, uh, I haven't, I haven't played, it doesn't seem like I played Zach Levine in like two years. Um, <laughs> uh, but at 7,700. I, I kind of kind of have to try it. I think, um, <laughs> plus uh, I mean, 7,300 on FanDuel by the way, as well. Yeah, um, I don't think I played him since DeRozan came to the Bulls. You know what I mean? Like since that team just kind of like became different since 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 Lonzo and and uh, what's his name uh, and DeRozan came there. I just it just didn't seem like any night was a Levine night, you know, because it wasn't the way it was before, where he was like the only guy who could score. Yeah. Um, as far as DeRozan goes, he shows up as a decent play for me, um, uh, probably alongside of guys like a different position, like Siakam. Um, maybe, yeah, that, that's a good way to, maybe, maybe like Halliburton sort of, I mean, who do I like more between Halliburton and DeRozan? I don't know. It's good for question. me, it's Halliburton, but yeah, it's, it's, it's close for me. So these guys are plays, you know, these are not like huge priorities, anybody in this game, but I think they're all, they're definitely possible. Yeah. And do you mind if we, if we skip over the Spurs Minnesota until we update, cause we just got news that Vassell was ruled out. And that is going to open up a slew of, of stuff. That's so think. interesting because I already had that. Uh, oh, you did. Okay. All, so we had all, my, all my projections had him out. Oh, okay. Well then let's go right to it because yeah. I, I didn't realize the projections were already ready for that. So let's look. Yeah. At, I'll, I'll go through it. it. I'll start with San Antonio. So you have of the one, two, three, of like the 10, 11 top, you know, top 13 values on the slate, like five of them, I have San Antonio. And mm-hmm. at the top of the list, I have Josh Richardson at 3,900. Um, I also show him at, currently about 37 percent ownership so we have to have to kind of yeah. see see where that kind of plays um and then the next guy i have trey jones again at 5500 he's going to be over 20 percent we're not going to be whatever that's what i have now keldon johnson 6800 20 percent plus total again um and then also uh, uh josh primo uh sticks his nose into the uh into the mix here at 4k so i have all these guys 20 percent plus and this is, you know, this is the the, the value uh, uh, for the day, you know, and, and the mm-hmm. questions of what you want to do. I mean, it seems seems kind of bizarre that Josh Richardson could be forty percent owned in, in in a game of basketball nowadays. And, but, and a, um, on a full slate, yeah, on a full slate. But you know, I, I, I without even looking, I imagine he must have played minutes and, and did had a good game his last game, right? Oh, um, not even. I mean, no, his he, last uh, few games have been bad, but they're counting on production. Right, the cell going to him, but the thing is, he's such a non-productive player. He, the only game he's had this year, he made six out of his eight threes, which he's not a great yeah. point shooter. So, uh, if he's thirty-seven percent owned, I would, I, I would, I would definitely have Josh Richardson in my mix, but I would definitely be below the field on it. But I think what you probably, I mean, this is, seems pretty pure, but what you probably do is, is if you're going to play them, is just play a few of them and then take a a, a low projected, low owned Minnesota guy on the other side, like maybe Ed, 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 Anthony Edwards. He's usually the guy I go to in situations like that, but Edwards or even cat at 3% ownership or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that that's, and I think that, that these ownership projections are probably kind of fraudulent because I think if the San Antonio guys are going to be popular, you have to think it's some people are going to be playing Minnesota runbacks, right? So, so I ha- can't imagine that all those Minnesota guys are going to be low owned. But um, uh, that's probably how I would attack this uh, this game. Yeah. So, so I think that you're, I think you're going to play at least one player from San Antonio in every lineup. I think you're probably playing two yeah. in most lineups and maybe yeah. more. Yeah. Um, but the problem is they are running a deep. They, they're playing a lot of guys. Uh, it's really hard to get a feel for it. It's, it's what they do. And they've, and by the way, to, to their, they've been effective with it. Like they're, this, they're, they're playing way above, above their heads so far. Um, and I don't see why, why they, why we should count on that just stopping tonight because 
I, I, I mean, but again, that, that's, that just means pop plays more and more guys. They just beat this team in Minnesota the other day. Feels like the kind of game where it turns around. They won by nine in Minnesota the other day. I feel like maybe Minnesota turns around and beats them by like 30, but they're three and one right now. <laughs> like this is the team, the teams that are supposed to be tanking are doing the exact opposite. And the teams that are supposed to be good now, like Minnesota are, are, are been terrible. So I like the idea of, of getting, look, I, I, Richardson is my, I prefer Trey Jones. I think he'll actually, I feel safer about his minutes. And obviously he's much, you know, he's more expensive, but I don't care because he's, you know, he's putting up 30 fantasy points a game with the cell. I don't see why it would be any worse without the cell. It should certainly be better and a great matchup. I think this is a good spot for Trey Jones to get close to 40 if they, if they let him go. But again, it's really hard to trust them. Trey Jones, uh, I think Podal and Keldon Johnson are really interesting. The Primo and Sohan thing are, are tough for me, as well as Zach Collins. Zach Collins, they're just not going to give minutes to. They're going to play him like 20 minutes maximum. That's all they've done for the past two years. I, I can't assume it'll change until it does. So it's going to be Podal, Keldon Johnson, and Trey Jones as the priorities because they're the guys I know have minutes. But I want to get one of the value guys in. And as of right now, obviously, it looks like Josh Richardson is the best one. But I don't mind the idea of taking a shot of the young, what is he now, 20 or 21, uh, Josh Primo. Uh, same thing with Sohan. I just don't know which one I would prefer. I guess I would leave it up to which position you feel like is stronger. And I think that uh, I think guards are stronger a little bit than forwards today. So maybe maybe you do take a shot on Sohan, who's going to be the lower owned of the of the bunch. But it just feels weird with the Spurs being chalky all the time because the rotations are just deep. You know, you get you think you're going to get the 30 minute Josh Richardson game, and then all of a sudden it's 15 minutes for Josh Richardson, and those minutes get spread out amongst all of these other Doug McDermott's, Isaiah Roby's. Etc. You know what I mean? Maybe even yeah. Robio Langford gets on the court tonight. Uh, just there's a lot of guys they can throw out there, and that's sort of what they've been doing. I will continue to to take shots. That, so I think that, that, that Minnesota, this trade, what has hurt so far the most um, for Gobert is Anthony Edwards. It's just a terrible. He's a great pick and roll player. He and Cat are one of the best pick and roll di- uh, team uh, duos in the league. And you can't pick and roll with a guy who they don't they, when they pick and roll with with Gobert. Go, the man doesn't even go out there. That's it. The, the guy, the guy just waits, waits around there. And Edwards, you want attack in the basket. It's just hard for me to know, you know, when that'll change. Maybe they'll stop running the pick and roll with him. And just, just use Carl Anthony Towns to run the pick and rolls with him. Because I think Anthony Edwards could go off for like 60 very, very soon. I feel like this feels like a good spot for it. So I would, uh, I would, I would lean Edwards as my favorite play on the other side. Uh, I don't think any of them are musts, but I think Edwards would be my favorite to go for the ceiling. Uh, you might get 20, you might get 60. You just got to know that it's a wide range of outcomes, but uh, I do think Edwards has a chance to go completely nuclear against this team. Uh, it's just a good, it's a good matchup. Forget the, forget the last game. I think that, I think that, and I think they're going to start trying to get him more and more active. I think he's their best player um, going forward and they're going to, they're going to be heavily uh, relying on him. So he would be my favorite run back. All right. Uh, Houston and Utah. Uh, I'll tell you what, like, again, these everybody's, sort of playing a little bit above their above their heads I, I will I will say the same thing I say every day I think you play one of Jalen Green or Kevin Porter Jr. every single time it hap- it works every single time <laughs> one of them one of them puts up a, a six to seven x score at a high price which I like uh those would be my two favorite plays uh Jabari I, I love as a real life player and I I think he'll get better I don't think I'm gonna I don't think I'm gonna play him here but I, I think he's fine. He's going to actually project really well point per dollar wise. But I think Jalen Green and, and Kevin Porter Jr. Are, are my two favorites. And I just don't know what I want to do with the front court. If Deshaun Tate is out, um, then you, it opens up some things. But we wouldn't know that till late anyway. So I don't know if I'd want to backload because it's not that big of a piece of news. But it feels like we should want to do something in their front court with no Shangun, um, with no uh, with no Fernando, with no... Uh, they're, you know, Garuba on the bench now. I don't, I don't know what the hell they're doing. You, Garuba, you might get 25 minutes out of, you might get 10. Uh, it just feels like a, a sort of a slew of guys. They're sort of running out there at the, at the big positions. But the main thing is Kevin Porter or Jalen Green as of right now, maybe maybe if Garuba starts, I think that he is actually a really, he'd be an interesting value. Um, and on the other side, I think Kelly Olenek is going to pop like crazy again. And I think it's fine. Um, I think he's going to pop, especially on FanDuel, where he's 5,300. Well, he's 56 on DraftKings. He's going to look like a really good play. Um, a, a wide range of outcomes guy on a big slate with a with a, with a a lot out there. I, I really think that maybe, uh, you know, is, is usually worth the fade. Uh, let's put it that way. And I think Laurie Markin in, in his new role, like he, he shot the ball terribly the other night um, in the same matchup against Houston. 
I sort of like him to bounce back here. I mean, he's put up 50 twice this season and we got to change the way we look at him. So I think Markkinen actually may be my favorite jazz member. And as of right now, the jazz appear to really actually be trying to win. I don't know when they're going to turn that around. I don't think they're going to be able to maintain that for the whole season, but I think they're sort of waiting till it crumbles. And if it, if the, I don't know, I don't honestly know what they're doing. They just have a bunch of guys who are just pretty good at basketball. They have like eight guys like that. Um, so I, I don't know for me right now, I'm leaning marketing as my favorite play, but uh, Conley, Alinek, Vanderbilt, all certainly solid plays in their own right. I just, uh, I would lean Markinen as my favorite of all of them. Yeah. Conley's never been a guy I like to play. Um, Same here. Uh, I like, I like Markinen. Uh, as I, I discussed him uh, last, last time uh, we talked about one of a couple of times that it's, a, it's an interesting role for him, you know, uh, because he's, he's been, you know, I don't want to say constrained, but he's when he was when, on Chicago, he, there's all kinds of other scorers out there. And now they're not expecting too much out of this whole team. And until, until, like I said, until they really are trying to win or whatever it is, I mean, they're throwing them out there for 30, 30 plus minutes and saying, do your thing, you know, and, and uh, um, uh, against Houston, who doesn't really like to play defense too much. Listen, that last game, obviously I think that last game went, went significantly under, I think, I think this game when they played each other, and this one could, I think, go the opposite direction. I think this game could blow up. And I think, I think people, um, I don't want to say overstack that game, but, but th- that game was pretty popular, and it pro- it really didn't deliver, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this, t- I think today it can. I think you play the same guys that you talked about. You play Kevin Porter, you play Jalen Green, um, Utah. You could play Markin, and you could play Olenek if you want. And I think Vanderbilt. You know, he's he's, you know, he's he's starting right, and he's mm-hmm. playing thirty. 30 plus minutes, I think you can go right back to this. And it's so funny. It's like, it's not going to work on a small slate as, as chalk and then on a big slate when no one's playing it. I think you do, you can approach it the exact same way. So I, I definitely like all that stuff. Yeah. And I want to throw out again, I, I didn't mention Vanderbilt. I should have, I think Vanderbilt actually might even be a priority guy for me today. I feel very confident with him to get 25 to 35 fantasy points, especially in this matchup. And he's playing the minutes. And this is a guy who can, who can do it in a million different ways. I think he's a really strong play. And I, I really, I should have mentioned him because I, I think that, I think I like him better than Olenek. Um, I feel more secure with his minutes, with the rotation, with his future, with the team, everything like that. And I think that that, that's, that says something. I mean, what is he over? He's 61 on FanDuel now. So he's kind of tough to play over there, but at 5,100 on DK, I actually think Vanderbilt's like a really, really good play in that range. You know, a little, I, I like him a little better than, than, than Olenek. And I like him a little better than I like uh, Jalen Smith, but I like, I like, I like Olenek fine. And I like Jalen Smith fine. I just think Vanderbilt, you get a little bit of a cheaper price. And I feel like you're going to have a similar result most of the time here. All right. Um, do you have the Clippers, the Lakers first? Yeah. Um, okay. So <laughs> uh, for what it's worth, I would be very surprised if Russell Westbrook plays tonight. I don't know if he's actually officially been announced out yet or not. Uh, I think that he's doubtful at best. Um, and I don't want to get into all this stuff. I just want to point out the Lakers are shooting 22% from three point range. You're not going to win in the end, modern NBA shooting 22% from three point range. The Lakers probably should be two and one right now because they just missed too many shots in those other two games. But uh, the the overreactive crazy Laker thing and everybody hating Westbrook is just, it's really tiring to listen to. He's been terrible. I don't, I don't blame any, blame a lot of it. There's a lot of things I could point out that aren't all his fault because everybody's been terrible. Like nobody else can make a shot on this team. And now we've got LeBron who takes 10 threes a game. And if that's, that's really his role now. Like, I mean, it's, it's kind of gross to be honest with you. They really need to get a win when they need to get a win. Uh, I will, I will say that if I was making three lineups tonight, I would absolutely have one LeBron Jokic lineup built in there just automatically. I think that there's, and, and, and LeBron is going to, LeBron's going to be on because he's under 10 K. Um, he's going to project pretty well. Kendrick Nunn is, is take your best guess. I actually think this is, he's a, he's a better play than he's getting credit for tonight. Cause if they need some scoring and they're going to need guys who can actually make shots. I know he hasn't made many shots so far this year, but now there's anybody else in the Lakers. He's put up, he put up a half a fantasy point in his last game. He hasn't been playing much, but without Westbrook there, should open up some extra minutes. It's it's tough to to, to try to figure out the Lakers right now. Um, as of the, the way I look at it is is Davis and James are both in, in play. I like James better, and I like the idea of one at least one James and Jokic lineup. Uh, Beverly fine. Uh, I think I think Beverly's going to pop, but I I don't think that. It's just I feel like there's there's going to be changes in the rotation coming soon. 
just because the West uh, Beverly can't really shoot or hasn't been able to shoot so far this season either. And it's weird to play a guy who has only put up, you know, a season high as 21 fantasy points just because Westbrook's out. It's not like they're going to run offense through Patrick Beverly. Um, so I, I feel sort of meh about everybody on the Lakers, except for, you know, one of James or Davis, not together. I wouldn't play them. And then uh, you could have, a, you could have a sneaky, you know, Troy Brown, a lot of minutes game. I don't know what he's going to do with those minutes. And I feel like they could just as easily turn into Austin Reeves or Toscano Anderson or Kendrick Nunn. Um, maybe I should look a little more into Lonnie Walker. I think there is upside for him. I mean, he took 21 shots a couple games back. Uh, so I, I just feel like, okay, I'll take him as a long shot play. I don't think he's, but I, I think he's, you know, I guess he's only going to be about what, seven to 8% owned. Maybe. I don't know. I, I just feel very, very up in the air with this one. I would love to know who ends up as the, th- as the fifth starter uh, tonight. And if it's Troy Brown, I think that 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 helps Lonnie Walker out and they they need guys who can shoot and who can create a little bit. So I guess I would say LeBron, LeBron and, and Lonnie Walker. I'm just sort of talking through it because it's it's hard for me to, to decide. Um, Lonnie Walker and LeBron are my favorite, too. And uh, a low owned Jokic on the other side will absolutely be a priority for me. I don't care what happened in recent games. I think it's going to be perception that, oh, with everybody back, Jokic is not quite the same guy. I just think they've played in some weird games. They lost by 25 in the last one. They lost by 21 on opening night. The two games that were actually competitive, he put up 58 and 66. Um, I think you're going to see him closer to 60 against this Lakers front line more often than not. So I will have Jokic as a priority play for myself tonight. Yeah, I, th- I think that every that Golden State that that uh, what you would call it Denver's games have made just perfect sense. Like the the first game, like in Utah, when they just figured Utah was 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 nothing. Utah came out and surprised them. And then as, as you know, as I talk about all the time, I think Denver reacted completely as expected put up a great performance in Golden State. Then their home opener, they co- took care of business. And then right after a team's home opener, it's always, they're always very vulnerable. They go into Portland, they get waxed, you know, and, and, and look, fortunately, they only had to, they only played Jokic 27 minutes in that game, you know, made five, five fouls, you know, just not his day. Um, so I think coming back for the Laker game, I think, I think Jokic is going to be, He's going to mean business, you know, and I think he's mm-hmm. going to have a really, really good game. No one on the Lakers can guard him. Not that anybody can guard him anywhere, but, but I think that he's going to, he's going to show out. And, and uh, I agree with uh, LeBron. I wish he were at 9,900. Um, I wish he were a little more expensive um, to keep his ownership down a little bit, I think. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but as far as the values go, I have the guy that you said, you know what I mean? Like the, that he's, that's going to pop, you know, but Beverly I have as the top point per dollar play from this, from this game. But like you said, I don't, I don't, I just, something, something about it feels wrong. You know, it's like, right. um, so there's that. And the other guy that you spent a lot of time talking about, uh, is another guy I have uh, in the top five or so for the whole slate. And that'd be Lonnie Walker. I don't know what, what his role, I, I guess he's like starting nowadays. He's just playing more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. He's um, starting to the play Lakers. Here. Yeah. So, so both those guys make sense. Um, and I'm not really, looking at anything else from from the Lakers um so uh yeah I mean there's obviously blowout risk as usual in any game with Denver at home and in every game with the Lakers on the road that's like mm-hmm. whatever but I, I listen I think both teams are going to come to play um I think it's going to be probably a competitive game within the construct of the point spread what is it eight something like that uh it's it's, not, it's uh it's only five and a half five and a half whatever so a race to be a pretty close enough game, and uh, you have two superstars that are gonna, you know, probably have good games. Is 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 um, Jokic's uh, median or whatever as good as Giannis? I don't think so tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but that doesn't mean he can't outscore him <laughs> at, at one eighth the ownership, whatever the hell he's gonna be. You know, what I mean? whatever, not one eighth. You know, what I mean? um, he's gonna be lower on than Giannis. So. Yeah, I mean, why don't you play like, play like Jokic with 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 LeBron? And you know, that's a that's a fun sweat at 10 p.m. Yep, yeah, totally agree. Um, and and I think that's a I think it's a you know it, I'm biased. It's one that's won me six figures before, so I, I'm always I'm always a little little biased towards that one. And you also have the you know the Jokic double MVP thing. LeBron always the Lakers need a win. And the Lakers need to win like this. I, I just feel like LeBron is you know, like. Well, is, is he going to kill you with a 50? No. Can he get you 70? Yes. I think that's where, where I really, I think he's going to be somewhere in the 60 range a lot of the time here. All right. Uh, Miami, Portland. It's a, uh, it's who I wouldn't have imagined you could play this game anywhere. You could literally have only Portland fans allowed in the arena before the season. And it's only been four games into the season. I would have felt like no matter what you did, you know, whenever they played Miami would be favored by some number. It's just weird to see Miami as an underdog to a really good Portland team. That's four and zero. 
Um, uh, and, and, and Damian Lillard has been as of right now would be the league MVP. It's only four games in, but he has been insanely efficient, uh, outside of his first game where he was five of 18. He was, I mean, you know, he's, he's, his, his three point shooting has been incredible. Obviously he's a great free throw shooter anyway, but he's, he's making almost all of his shots. He's got a little less usage. I'm not going to play Damian Lillard. And that's not why I'm bringing this up really. I'm just sort of pointing out how good he's really been. I don't know if people realize it even. It's, it's just, it's, I mean, I guess people realize it, but it's, it's pretty incredible how efficient he's been. He only took 16 shots in the last game, put a 56 fantasy points. He made most of his shots, but still, it's just, uh, just interesting. Uh, I think that Bam is going to look like an, uh, yet again, another good value play. Um, this is not as good of a center matchup as maybe people think. I think Bam is fine. I don't think that he's a guy I need to play tonight. I don't think he's a guy I, I, I need to avoid. I, I just don't feel, I don't really feel like I have anything specifically in this game that, that stands out as a guy who I need to play. Um, but it should, it's a, you know, it's got a high total for, for a Miami game. Uh, you know, hero could get it going. I, I don't know. It's just, I don't really have anybody who's a priority, but may, may, maybe, uh, maybe you do just say, okay, you know what? Maybe Damian Lillard's going to be this efficient again. And you play him. I don't think I could, I could put him as high as the other spend ups. I just don't think I can do it. Um, so I'm sort of off of this game for fantasy purposes. It seems like a good real life game. Yeah. So I have a couple of takes here on, and nothing's projection based. If you want to know the truth. So, I mean, no, nobody really looks like a good play here. Uh, uh, Josh Hart again, looks like a, semi-decent point per dollar play but aside from that nobody looks 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 good so i like to shout out shout out to someone who had a really nice game for me the other day that was that he's the guy that got me close in the in the big one and that would be Yurkic, uh nurkic and it was you kind of talked me on him a little bit you know um and one thing that's like kind of like shocking when you think about this all these years we've been waiting for this you know i don't know if anybody's noticed but Yusuf Nurkic has played 35 minutes in like two of the last three games, which we never saw before. Right. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, like if, if you can, if, if, if this is like a thing, I mean, 6,700 is going to be kind of a joke for him uh, yep. in a while, you know? So, so I'm going to, um, and look, it's not the greatest matchup in the world against Bam. You know what I mean? Um, but, but almost so that I don't forget to play him when <laughs> for a while, I might, I might just sprinkle him just, just, just for fun. Um, Definitely not the best center play on the board. Uh, as a matter of fact, I mean, look on, on straight numbers, Bam is going to look like a like a better play. I suppose I'm looking at it, and Nurkic, I guess, is going to be zero percent owned as a result of all this. I suppose. Yeah. Um, so 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 that that's not, that's something to do. What you certainly can do, by the way, is if you if you are playing, if you do like Bam and you have him in lineups and you need to get a little extra juice and you get into this game, then you could definitely swap to Nurkic from Bam. Um, and 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 take an ownership discount there so that's that's pretty much all i have i have no real no real take the other thing i would say is that we talked about him the other day um there was a stretch of about nine minutes where anthony simons went freaking off he's, he's, i think he made like six threes in a row in like the third quarter or he something did. like that yeah it was nuts um and yet he's still only only i guess only had number 47 fantasy points here. um but uh, yeah, they 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 got they got him going uh, in, the, mm-hmm. in the last game. So uh, again, not the greatest matchup or something like that uh, for for a player like this. But you know, just uh, uh, again, projections. Not much in this game. Kind of a gut play on Nurkic, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The one last guy I, I probably should have touched on a little bit is, uh, and it feels kind of gross to play him, but. Uh, I don't mind Caleb Martin in this type of environment <clears throat> just to throw that out there as a 4,100, 4,400 play 4,100 on Fanduel, a little better over there because uh, also it's lends itself more to his skill set. He can get some steals and whatnot, um, but it should be a fun slate. It looks like a tough one early on. We're definitely going to have news later on. That's going to change things. It's just the way the NBA works. And, sure, okay. uh, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to put my core plays up right now, but mostly they're going to be higher, higher end plays because I'm and hoping for some more value to open up so we, we can play those guys. And uh, I think I'm going to have some different higher end plays than most people just to really quickly touch on some of those guys for me. Um, I'll just grab my core here. Uh, mm-hmm. I like Jokic and Giannis and LeBron. I would, I would just be mixing these guys in, but I would play my, my Jokic is with LeBron. I would play my Giannis is with Durant or Kyrie. If I was going to, if I was going to double spend, if you if you get the value to spend up, I really like Levine. I really like Halliburton from that other game. The more I think about it. Um, and I think Josh Richardson is the, is the guy who I would plug in as my initial value 
but hoping I can find something better. And I, and I, I really like the Dennis Smith play. I hope people don't get, don't get on it as much because I think that actually is a really good, there's narrative, there's usage. He's going to get there. They're tank. He's a perfect tank guy. Cause he can put up numbers. Oh, that are, he's are sort of like, like an elite tank player. I mean, yeah. That's... Like literally like the nut, the nut tank player probably. Um, I also have a weird prediction, by the way, uh, Russell Westbrook, by the way, I think is going to end up on the Miami heat after he gets traded and gone out before, before the, the end of the thing. And I think that's actually a perfect fit for him. You get him with a guy like Riley and a bunch of mean, angry guys for a team that needs somebody to initiate offense from the point guard position. Uh, that's something he can do. <laughs> okay. So I, uh, that's just a bold call. That's going to come and come and come to fruition in about two months is my guess. I have, um, so I, I just want to just again, touch on Am- this Amphrey Simons thing, just to kind of show you like what, what, what volatile players just kind of, kind of look like here. I mean, you have, look at these last two games, right? The Denver and the Lakers. It's not like either of these teams are much better defensively than the other. You can even argue probably maybe Denver might even be better defensively than Lakers. I'm not even sure. Anyway, he was 36 minutes in both games. Like two games ago, he was five for 17, including 0 for 6 from 3. And forget that, five fouls and, and five turnovers on, on, a, on like a shooting guard. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, like, in just one one game later, literally back-to-back games, he doesn't miss a shot, zero personal fouls, <laughs> and, and one turnover. So right. so, so even, even in the highly projectable sport of basketball, like, you get a guy like this, uh, just, you know, it's, uh, they, they can be frustrating from time to time. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. And, and, and that's just the way it works. It's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's strange, especially when it comes to these guards. Um, yep. But we even saw Jokic with a, with a dud the other night, like a real dud. Yep. Um, yep. So yep. every, everything is possible, but I, I, I do think that, uh that, you know, this is going to be a good one. I sh- I'm going to try to be live with you guys at, at six. I'm not promising that I will be, but if I can get everything straightened that way, I, d- I certainly will be. Um, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? Nope. Sounds good. All right. Good luck to everybody. Thanks again so much to Sheets for covering. And uh, I did put my core plays up on say on our site. If you have if you uh, have access to Sabersim and even, even so, I, I post them on our uh, site directly. And uh, let's make some money tonight, everybody. So good luck. Or oh, you guys make some money. I can't make any money. Right. Um, I'm, I'm in Nedo. So good luck to everybody. And uh, we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards.